shooting portraits at midday can be prone to being problematic for obvious reasons, the high angle of the sun. Somebody reached out and asked me, would I do a video about processing such images? So, let's give it a go. Hi, and welcome to episode 70 of Understanding Dark Table. Uh, as I said in the intro, someone reached out to me, and I don't remember if it came in via email or if it was a comment on this channel. Uh, I did a search for both, and I couldn't find who it was or which avenue that request had come in via. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe it was on the, uh, the Facebook group. But anyway, so my apologies, uh, whoever it was that asked this, but the question was basically, how do you process, you know, those problematic portraits which are shot in noon type sun or, you know, close to noon sun? So what I did was I went back through my collection of images and the images that I've chosen for this episode are all taken from a road trip my wife and son and I did about eight years ago to Western Australia and back. Uh, and I've got a few portraits from that trip that were taken in harsh midday sun. So let's have a look. So I think my initial comment would be get your white point and your black point sorted first. Uh, I'm, as you know, a person who always shoots raw, so I will assume that if you're trying to process, you know, portraits that were shot in the middle of the day, hopefully you are working with raw files as well, because if you're working with a JPEG, your potential to, you know, bring some life back to particularly underexposed faces, and that's, let's face it, the the common grievance with midday portraits, uh, then your options there are very limited if you're working with a JPEG. So I would say, you know, get your white point and your black point sorted and then deal with everything else. So first image, my wife and son at the uh, radio telescope at Parks. Okay, so we've got this image. Now, I thought I had got rid of the history stack, but it doesn't appear that I had, so I will just get rid of everything. So, this is the raw image straight out of camera. Now, if you're wondering about the heavy vignetting in the bottom left and right corners and across the top of the frame, it's because I was shooting on a wide-angle lens and I had a filter holder uh, attached to the front and it protruded so far that it actually encroached on the image. So with that in mind, my first step would be to crop that out. Uh, so I would go to my crop and rotate. I'll probably go with the original aspect ratio and see if I can just get rid of all of that vignetting but still keep what I want. I'm going to end up with a little bit in the top left-hand corner, but I can live with that. Okay, so there's my crop. Now it is a case of setting a black and a white point. Now, we are now on Darktable 3.2.1 and we have Filmic V4. Would I go with Filmic? Sure, why not? So, I will set Filmic, knowing that standard practice with Filmic is to also introduce at least a half-stop boost uh, in exposure, although in this case I think we can probably go a whole stop. We could probably even push that a little bit further, I reckon. There we go, something like that. So now I've got my whites pretty close to where I want them. Let's just check the overexposed indicator. That was by pressing the O key, for those who didn't know. Uh, as we can see, we've got a little bit of clipping on this white uh, tower over here in the background, and we're clipping our blacks a little bit as well. So what I would probably do is go into Filmic and maybe just back the blacks off a little bit so I'm not clipping those quite as aggressively. Yes, I could potentially do the same thing with the white point, I guess, if we have to be fussy. All right, so now I've got that. The question then is, am I happy with the shadow on my wife and my son's faces? 
in this image, it's actually not too bad. But if I wanted to lighten those up, me personally, I would probably go for a tone curve. For that, I will jump over here and go RGB curve. And what I would do is grab the range eyedropper. So not just the single point eyedropper, but the range eyedropper. And I would drag across a face just to get a rough idea of where those tones fall within this image. And I would then want to lift those tones up a little bit like so, but you've probably noticed that it's affecting tones up here in the sky as well. So in this instance, I would probably then go for a drawn mask. I'd probably just grab a paintbrush and go something like this. Just cover the faces and the fronts of the clothing where it's all a little bit, you know, in shadow. And I can then check that mask, see how it looks. Yep, pretty much what I wanted. Maybe just feather it off a little bit. And then turn that off. And so now if we compare without and with. Now, could you push that further? You could... But my feeling is that you want to retain a little bit of realism as well. Like, obviously, their faces were in shadow. And yes, we wanted to bring some detail to that, but we don't want to try and make it look as though they were lit with fill flash because that is never going to be believable. Lifting shadows is one thing, but it is never going to replace having actually had a light source lighting them up. So that's image number one. Let's move on to image number two. And yes, we could do a whole lot more image processing with these images, I understand, but we're just trying to address how you would deal with, you know, this shadow over the face artifact that is common with daylight, you know, or midday portraiture. Okay, so here's another one. Again, I thought I'd got rid of all of these history stacks, but apparently I didn't. Okay, so again, that's the raw image straight out of camera. And again, you can still see this uh, filter bracket around the edge of the frame. So I am going to do the same thing, going to crop that out. And yes, that is me absolutely rocking the fashion world. Uh, in the middle of Australia, and uh, yeah, so that's how it came out of camera. Again, we could go with filmic, or we could let's just try something else just because we can. I would go for an RGB curve, that is how I used to do it before filmic came along, and I could probably do something like this. Let's just turn on my overexposed indicator. Yeah, we can probably crush the blacks just a little bit. How far can we push out? There's our highlights starting to clip. Probably just back that off to about there. That would do. There's a little bit overexposed on Max's cap, but I'm okay with that. Turn that off. And again, it's just a case of how are we going to deal with the shadow over the faces? Well, we could do RGB curve again, but let's just try some other things. We could use the highlight and shadows module. Uh, I know that that's sort of frowned upon now by Aurelian, but let's just give it a go. Again, let's just limit it only to that part of the image that we really want to affect, which is the parts that are in shadow and we also want Kath's face and we want Max's face like so just have a look at that yep soften it off a little bit maybe not quite that much about there okay so now we want to bring up those shadows 
Yeah, I don't really like the look of that, to be honest. That's just me. This is not a module that I've ever really spent a lot of time with. Can't say I'm a big fan of that look myself. I, I preferred what I did with the first image, which is to use the RGB curve, select the range so that you know what you're working with, and, uh, and then dial it in. I do know that I, I covered all of these sliders when I did the video on the Shadows and Highlights module, but to be honest, I've forgotten it because it's not a module I use. So again, I'd probably want to add some contrast and whatever to this image, but I'm done with it. Let's move on. Third one, Kath and Max again. This is out on the, uh, right out in the middle of Australia. Uh, and as you can see, we have a good selection of wildlife in Australia. Okay, let's get rid of this history stack and let's crop out that <laughs> filter holder again. Yes, I kind of, I knew that it was encroaching on these frames when I shot them and that's why I shot them a little bit wider so that I knew I would be able to crop it out when I came to post-processing. Okay, so again, let's just go with Filmic. We know it does a pretty good job. Add a little bit of exposure. I'm thinking we can probably go a whole stop there. Yep, doesn't look like we've clipped anything there yet. There it is, just starting to creep in there. Yeah, I'll just leave it at plus one. Okay, what about the tone equalizer? Everyone's raving about the tone equalizer. I have to confess to not being blown away with the tone equalizer to me it's a whole lot of work for something that i can achieve with a tone curve in a much shorter period of time but we'll give it a go so now i've got to remember how to use the thing i remember that we want to stretch this thing out as much as we can and Contrast, we want to, oi, 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 there we go. Okay, getting there. Could probably push it a little bit further. I reckon that's as good as we're going to get. There we go. So we've got our mask uh, stretching right across the histogram of the tone equalizer graph, which is what we wanted. Uh, by the way, if this is not making sense to you, then you should probably go back and watch the episode on the tone equalizer. Okay, so now we could mouse over the image with our funky cursor here, and we can see on the graph whereabouts these particular tones are in our image. And that would then allow us to go in here and lighten those tones up a little bit. Like I said, I'm not particularly blown away. I'm blown away with the tone equalizer in the way it works, what it does, but to me, it's just a bit too much effort. Give me a tone curve. It's easy. So that's lightened up our shadows and I would probably want to give a bit of contrast to the entire image. So I would probably do that with a little bit of local contrast. That's definitely starting to clip some stuff. Let's turn that off. That's not looking too bad. Uh, compared with where we started, which was back here. Yep. We've lightened their faces up and we've given it some contrast. And to me, that's an acceptable presentation of this particular image. Yeah, yes, there's more stuff we could do. But in terms of dealing with those shadows, this would be my general approach. Uh, the last image is one where I did actually use some fill flash. Uh, so again, we'll get rid of all of this and we can see that this is where we have started. Crop out that crud on the sides of the image and I just crop in a bit there. Uh, so this was a self portrait. Like I said, you can see that I've used fill flash by the light in the wheel well here. 
let's give Filmic a go because it generally does a pretty good job. So that's where we start. We'll throw in an extra stop of light. Check our overexposure indicator. So we're not clipping any of the highlights yet, but we are clipping blacks. So we could probably push this a little further. There we go. That's probably a bit too far. Yeah, maybe 1.1. Okay. So that's pretty much as far as we can push the exposure without clipping the highlights. To be honest, these parts being black is quite okay with me because it's black tires and inside of a wheel arch, I'm fine with that being clipped. In terms of other things to do with this image, actually this one's not so bad. I was kind of thinking that there was some stuff to talk about here, but now that I think about it, the fill flash pretty much did what I wanted it to do. In terms of exposure, my legs are probably a little bit overexposed, <laughs> face is maybe a little bit underexposed. Obviously, I didn't have the fill flash tilted high enough. So what I would probably do here is go with an RGB curve. Let's, yep, select my legs. So we're up here. So we're just going to pull that down a little bit like so, and again, go for a drawn mask and a brush, and we'll just do my legs, like so, feather that off a bit, have a look at that, yep, that'll do. I'm kind of rushing through this, obviously, if I, you know, wanted to be more precise, I could be. Uh, but this hopefully gives you an idea. Uh, so, without and with. And I could probably do another RGB curve just to lighten up my face. So, come in there. So we're down here. Just lighten that. Whoa, got to be careful with that. Actually, now that I paid more attention to that, there's actually shadow just here across my shoulder so I really don't want that effect to be on my chest or on my arms so I should come back here grab the brush and we'll just cover my face and my shoulder and that's looking pretty good and get out of there let's have a look at that without with I think that's probably gonna work yeah again you could finesse that more if you wanted to but this has been a very quick and dirty uh, attempt at lightening up some shadows on faces from midday portraits I hope this has given you some ideas like I said there are other modules that you could use and if you have particular favorite modules then you could try this approach to try and soften some of those shadows in midday portraits if you find the tone equalizer is your go-to tool for uh, dealing with nuances of tone across your image by all means use the tone equalizer if you like shadows and highlights use shadows and highlights if you like fill light there's one I didn't try. Uh, feel free to use that. You know, whatever works for you. That's the beauty of Darktable. There are so many tools that can achieve similar results. And, you know, whether they work differently under the hood, I don't know. But most of them have, you know, slightly different controls. Some of them, like the Tone Equalizer, have a completely different UI. Um but yeah, so to whoever it was who requested that, my apologies that I can't remember who it was. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's given you some ideas. And uh, yeah, that's about it, I think. Uh, again, patrons, thank you for your support. And uh, my mate James that I've mentioned before in the past, who a couple of times a year we go away for a weekend motorbike ride, he and I are going away next weekend, uh, me on my new bike, and uh, 
him on his regular bike. So very much looking forward to that. Going to be taking the camera with me. Still got the 28-200 on loan from Tamron, so I'm going to take that lens with me and see if I can't give it a bit more of a workout and hopefully come back with some great images that I can muck around with in future videos. All right, people, thank you for the continued support, and I will see you in the next one.